Mesdames et messieurs, bonsoir. Bienvenue à Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to Kuru to follow the final chronology of this 250th Ariane 5 launch. We are here live from the Jupiter Control Center. All parameters are green for a launch tonight at 16.09 Guyana time. We will discover the uh, launcher on its launch pad and its table, uh, 53 meters high. It's waiting in silence, but when the engine starts roaring, they will roar for good. At the top of the uh, launcher, the fairing below which we have at the top, Tibo 1, the heaviest uh, satellite, 5,600 5, kilos, below which we have uh, Imarsat JX5, just below 4,000 4, kilos. And immediately we uh, go to the Jupiter Control Center with Katie Haswell with her guests. Uh, thanks indeed, Claude. Yes, I'm in the Jupiter Control Center. And uh, we are celebrating the uh, 40th year of the Ariane launcher. Uh, it first lifted off uh, on Christmas Eve 1979, and here we are 40 years later launching the 250th Ariane. The CEO of Ariane Space is Stefan Israel, and Stefan is with me now. Stefan, thanks for joining me here on the floor. Um, so, the 250th Ariane today is the eighth flight here from the Guiana Space Center this year. So, what's special about today's launch? In fact, you have a little bit said it. It is the 250th Ariane tonight. Uh, we celebrate a birthday which has started now almost 40 years ago. It was uh, for Christmas, 24 December 1979, and it has been a huge success story. And we are very happy today to celebrate it with uh, two key customers. Egypt, uh, for which we are going to launch uh, Tiba One uh, in a consortium uh, whose responsibilities made of Airbus and Thales Alenia Space, and in Marsat, GX5, and it would be the 10th satellite we orbit for in Marsat. So we are very proud to deliver for Egypt and in Marsat tonight. And we are 17 minutes to launch right now. What's happening and what's going to happen? Yes, so the day went very smoothly. We have made uh, all the operations linked to the final countdown. And a few minutes before the launch, we will have uh, the latest news from the weather. So either it will be OK or we have a long launch window of one hour and 35 minutes. So we will uh, wait for this latest information. Then at H0 plus seven seconds, the launcher will lift off at the initiation of the solid boosters. The launch will last 34 minutes. We will separate on an elliptical orbit inclined as, uh, at five degrees as opposed to the equatorial plan. We will separate first Tiba 1 after 27 minutes and after GX5 after 34 minutes. Stefan. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So, Stefan's uh, going to take his seat now uh, back in the fishbowl. That's the glass that you can see there uh, behind us here in the Mission Control Centre. Uh, there are a number of different teams working here in the fishbowl. Each of those teams has its own desk, and this is the team uh, who are doing the the flight directorate, the team who take all the final decisions in the event of unplanned situations. And uh, it's headed up by Stefan Israel. And the glass is actually very special reinforced glass. You can't actually hear people through it. So uh, if you knock on that glass, you can't actually hear what people are saying. And it's there especially to protect those teams who are inside. Now, um, we're going to go back over to Claude, who's out there on the terrace outside the Jupiter Control Center. Over to you, Claude. As uh, Stefan Israel just said, uh, we're not only here for the 250th Aryan launch, but also for the 40th anniversary of this Aryan launcher. Therefore, in one minute, I uh, propose we follow the history of Aryan. Allumage, premier étage.
Smooth, Nicolaj. Hull boosters off. Next to me is Etienne Sonho, an engineer at Air and Space. Etienne, you're 24 years old. Why did you choose this job and what is your function at Air and Space? This job, first of all, is a passion. It's the space. It's a true passion, a passion for space. We really want to uh, touch it. And if you want to get as close to it as possible, it's by getting as close as possible to the rocket, which is why I found my way into Aranespas. And I'm in charge of the qualification of satellites to the environment of the Thank you. I propose we follow a recording of Lise Bettersen and Guido telling us about the first launch. Hello, I'm very happy to have next to me Mr. Guy Dubo, who was in charge of the launch vehicle and attended the very first launch in December 1979. Tell us how it came to life. Well, the birth started very easily and then it was a little bit tougher. Uh, it was the LO1 campaign after a number of uh, trials and particularly an, uh, a fuel mock-up that allowed us to define the core operations for L01 in uh, a mere 54 days. And it ended with a final countdown. The, there's ignition, we clap, we clap like madmen. We were really happy, that is what we wanted to see. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seconds, and the engine switches off. And there, we were dumbfounded. And it took us a few seconds to uh, try and uh, shout out that we needed to get a grip of ourselves. And what was it like inside the launch centre, which was 250 metres from the vehicle, unthinkable today? Well, the conditions uh, were pretty special because we thought that we would come out of the CDL bunker uh, a few hours after the launch and we'd locked it up three hours before and we were supposed to be able to stay there for four or five, six hours maximum. And after 14 hours, we were still in there. So we'd completely run out of water, of food, uh, people were getting a little bit nervous and angry, so we had to open the doors. Although the safety conditions were not possibly the best, but the people from safety allowed us to open the door and uh, get some uh, fresh blood into the bunker. And how much time did you have for this? Well, the specs said that we had eight days between the first H0 and the next H0. We had eight days to uh, get it up and running again, new launch sequence included. Eight days is 192 hours, and we worked for 189 hours. So it meant we worked 24-7 uh, with uh, all of the unions pitching in, all of the people at the launch center, all of the people of Guyana. Everyone was behind this launch. Tell us about the 24th of December 1979. So on December 24th, 1979, of course, we had extended beyond the days that we had in theory, and uh, we were stopped by a weather red light. And uh, of course, uh, filling in with helium and so on was complicated. And then of course, at the very last launch attempt, it's when we succeeded. There were no re helium reserves, no liquid hydrogen. No. So, and then it took off. It was a real Christmas present. And what did you feel at the time? So we felt huge joy, a little bit like an athlete uh, who reaches his last tether. So there were many tears around, I can't lie about it. A lot of tears, a lot of uh, joy. It was like a real family around you. 
Yeah, absolutely. A family spirit prevails. And uh, we uh, reached an operational capacity after the first launch that we were supposed to have reached at L04. So we were three launches in advance, basically. We basically designed the modern, real-time operational methods. You were real space pioneers. Yeah, we could say that we were space pioneers. And I think even today's people are still pioneers for this uh, flight, for instance. There's the pioneering spirit. So what would you tell a young aerospace engineer today? What would I tell a young engineer? I'd say, believe in your job, because it's a fabulous job. You need to be confident in the future, and you need to be driven by the same family spirit. Thank you so much, Guy, for sharing this moment of history today and telling us about this beautiful story. Thank you, Lise. Well, an inspiring gentleman, isn't he? A bunker 250 meters away from the launch pad. That would be unimaginable today. Uh, what I feel is a lot of respect for people like Guy, who gave birth to Europe's space industry, and it was really over those 10 days that the operating spirit was born and something that's still in force today. Thank you, Etienne. There's a weather forecast to red. Uh, over to Katie. Uh, from uh, everybody uh, looking back over those last 40 years. Now, uh, yes, as uh, Claude mentioned, if you look at the top right-hand side of your screen, you can see there that the countdown has turned red. Uh, that's because we have uh, red means uh, stop and, of course, green means go. The uh, flow of information here at the Guiana Space Centre is made exactly for this. That's why we have the status panels and uh, it's all very normal. It means that the, the system is very much designed for this. Now, you'll probably see that the countdown will stop when we get to minus seven. Okay, so it's, uh, it has, it's stopped. So the countdown has now stopped, um, and that's because this is the beginning of the synchronized sequence. To the TDO, the red of the count is a red related to the conditions of the meteo. That all the means are ready. For the reprise of the chronology at 0 minus 7 minutes in case of return over. So the range operations manager has just announced that the countdown has stopped because we have a uh, weather concern. So uh, I'm afraid uh, uh, we, there's nothing we can do about Mother Nature. She's not on our side tonight and she wasn't yesterday, but let's see how things go. The uh, launcher and the satellites are in safe mode. And uh, remember that we have a launch window today of one hour and 45 minutes. So we have plenty of time. Uh, to see whether or not the weather becomes more clement. And if you look on the right-hand side there, you can see these are our status panels. And Meteo is the one that's turned green. That is the weather. And I'm suspecting that we may be talking here about high-altitude winds, but uh, we'll wait to hear from the experts on that. So I'm going to come off air uh, for a short while and we will uh, stay in touch with you um, and let you know what's happening and uh, how the teams are getting on as soon as we get any information. But for now, I'm going to cut the mic and wait for more information.
à tous de DDO. Suite au, au retour, du, pardon, suite au retour, euh, au retour au vert du moyen météo, le nouvel âge de revisé est 21h23 minutes 00. Le temps des comptes on redémarrera à 21h16 minutes 00. So we heard there from the range operations manager telling us that we now have a new launch um, time. So um, we have, if you look at the top right hand side of your screen, you can see that the countdown clock has turned green again. And we will be resetting the clock for 21 hours, 23 minutes. That is in universal time, or Greenwich Mean Time, as we like to say in the UK. And the countdown clock will start seven minutes before the launch time, because, as I was explaining earlier, the synchronized sequence is a sequence that is automated, and it needs to be gone through from beginning to end. So, we had... Uh, a halt in the countdown for anyone who's just joining us and who missed that. We're looking here at uh, the oh, lovely shot, actually. This is not the actual Ariane 5. That was a model just outside the Jupiter Mission Control Center. I think it's about three quarters of the height of the real thing. But here we're looking at the, the inside of that Mission Control Center and the operational teams there uh, who have now decided to reset the clock for a new count uh, for a new launch time and here Ariane 5 and its passengers waiting patiently on the pad à tous de DDO attention pour la reprise du temps des comptes Début de la séquence finale lanceur. Le nouvel âge 0 visé est 21h, 23 minutes, 00 TU. Je répète, le nouvel âge 0 visé est 21h, 23 minutes, 00 TU. OK, so he has now announced the... He's reset the clock. Uh, he has uh, restarted the countdown sequence. The synchronized sequence has now begun. The synchronized sequence is the last seven minutes of the final countdown. The final countdown actually started nine and a half hours ago. Now the people watching over these operations are in the launch control center. And <laughs> The 250th Aryan launch campaign started last September 5 at the Launcher Integration Building. The main cryogenic stage and the two solid rocket boosters were first assembled on the launch table and then the cryogenic upper stage was mated onto the main stage. On November 4, the launch vehicle was transferred to the final assembly building. The launcher preparation was completed in the same building, setting up the links between the launch vehicle and the launch table, finalizing the assembly of thermal protections, flight cells and batteries while the pyrotechnical lines were being armed. Then came the highlight when the mission's two passengers were hoisted on board. The launch campaign had just started with the arrival of Tiba-1 at the Felix Sebwe Airport, October 16. It has been transferred to the payload preparation facility in S5C, South High Bay. In Marsat GX5, the lower payload has landed at Felix Ebwe Airport on October 24 and was transferred directly to the S5C payload facility for unpacking. Combined operation with the launcher have started for Tiba-1 on November 7 by its flight mounting on the payload adapter then it was transferred to the base building, hoisted onto the Ariane dual launch structure, so-called SILDA, and encapsulated under the fairing on November 12th. For Ilmarsat GX-5, combined operation with the launcher had begun on November 9th, with its flight matting onto the payload adapter. After transfer to the bath, it was hoisted onto the launcher and encapsulated under the SILDA and the fairing on November 13th. The general dress rehearsal for range, the launcher on both satellites, 
was performed last Monday with all trekking stations that will be involved in the final chronology on the flight. Yesterday's operations at D-1 consisted in the transfer of the launch vehicle to the launch zone. Today at D-0, the operations will gradually gear up the launcher for liftoff. At the end of the chronology, during the last seven minutes, a fully automated sequence run by the launch base computers will fine-tune the launcher's configuration before handing over control to the onboard computer. At H0, the onboard computer sends the ignition order to the Vulcan agent and some seven seconds later to the two solid rocket boosters, which will unleash their 1,300 tons of thrust to lift off the 250th Aryan launcher. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our customers, their manufacturers and all the team involved in the satellite's preparation campaign that will lead to the Ariane 5 launch 250, roughly 40 years after the first Ariane launch in French Guiana. So those are all the operations that have been going on in the last couple of months all leading up now to this point a few minutes before launch three minutes before launch and the teams watching over all these operations are in the launch control center uh, which is about three kilometers from the pad not 250 meters like the first Ariane that we heard about earlier about a hundred or so people in here and they're dealing with all the systems concerning both the launch vehicle and the launch zone they started their preparations months ago, but right now their job is to make sure that Ariane is ready for takeoff. And they're monitoring all the events during this final phase now of the synchronized sequence. Very busy, concentrating hard right now. There we have Ariane, the satellites inside the top of the launcher there, waiting for liftoff. Nice and comfy. Got their air conditioning in first class with their seat belts on. Coming up to two minutes now, getting close. This is a good shot here of the cryogenic arms clamping to the upper stage of the launch vehicle. They feed liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen into the upper tanks and uh, to keep hydrogen and oxygen as a cryogenic fuel to keep it cold. We have to keep it the hydrogen at minus 253 and the oxygen at minus 150 Celsius. Very cold. Everybody coming out of the control center now to watch the launch with their own eyes from the viewing balconies on each side of the control center. This is the mission control center, about 15 kilometers or so from the pad. A tout de DDO, attention pour moins une minute. Top, à zéro moins une minute. We are live at the Guiana Space Center and one minute to the launch of Tiba 1 for Talisalenia Space and Airbus Defence and Space on behalf of the Government of Egypt and GX5 for the operator in Marsat, built by Talisalenia Space. Our best wishes to all the teams. We're pretty set to go. Let's uh, watch now and wish everybody the best of luck. A tous de DDO, attention pour les deux comptes finales. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage V1. Allumage V1, décollage. Les à bord sont normaux. La 
la propulsion est nominale. Well, that is a spectacular sight. Ariane 5, flight number 250, the 250th Ariane vehicle to launch from the pad here at the Guiana Space Center, blazing a trail across the equatorial skies. Flying supersonic, faster than the speed of sound. And the vibrations are reaching us here at the Guiana Space Center. He's telling us that everything on board is going according to plan. We're flying out east across the Atlantic. Tiba 1 and GX5 have started their journey. And he's telling us the propulsion is nominal. Right now, the boosters are doing all the work. They're those two big solid tanks on each side of the launcher. Once they burn their propellant, they separate and fall away. And we might be lucky enough to see that. We could just see them back there. Those two big boosters, those two dots we saw moving away. There we can see them. Look at that. The dot in the middle is the Vulcan engine on the main stage. And the two lights on either side are the boosters. We don't need them anymore. They've burnt their propellant and we are shedding weight. That's the name of the game. We need to get rid of our weight as quickly as we can. And those were propelling us away from our Earth's gravity. La propulsion est nominale. Bottom left is our altitude. We're 105, 106 kilometers high and climbing. Our distance in the middle. If you were to draw a straight line from the pad, I can still see those boosters la moving away. Croix. And we have confirmation there that the fairing has now separated. And look how those parts flex. It's called the breathing mode. It's all part of the plan. We don't need the fairing anymore because we are technically in space and our satellites can be exposed to space now because there's no longer any friction. And the captain has switched off the seatbelt Everything's going normally. Bottom right-hand side, we can see the speed is 263 kilometers per second, not per hour, per second. We will be getting faster and faster and heading towards speeds of above 9 kilometers per second later. Top right-hand side is our trajectory. The cross is the actual position of our launch vehicle and the uh, trajectory is our planned trajectory. Est nominal. Everything's going according to plan. Everything is nominal. You can see there in the front is our first satellite which is going to be separated. Tibo 1. You can see it there for the first time. We're going to find out a little bit more now about Tibo 1 in this film. Assalamu alaikum, merhaba bikum fi Guyana. My name is Valérie Boucher, and I am the Tiba One Program Director at Iron Space. My work mainly consists in interfacing with the customer and in preparing the mission for Tiba One. Tiba One is a civil and government telecommunication satellite for Egypt. It was developed by Thales Alinea Space and Airbus Defence and Space as co prime contractors with TAS acting as the consortium's lead partner. TAS is in charge of the communication payload, whereas Airbus is responsible for the Eurostar 3000 platform. 
Airbus is Ion Space direct customer for this mission. Ion Space and Airbus has developed a fruitful cooperation since the creation of the European Launch Service Provider in 1980. The satellite will be owned and operated by the government of Egypt. It will be the fourth satellite launched by Ion Space for Egypt. On behalf of Ion Space, I would like to thank Airbus, Thales Alenia Space and the government of Egypt for their confidence. And I wish all the best to Tibawan. Hasai Tibawan. And our next satellite to be released is GX5 for Inmarsat. Can't see it right now because it's hidden inside the black structure, the fairing. Ariane Space and Inmarsat go back to 1981 with the Marix series. We're going to get a closer look now at the most advanced satellite in Inmarsat's GX fleet. Inmarsat is a faithful customer of European industry. Thales Alenia Space is the prime contractor of JX5. This satellite is based on the Heritage platform, well known by Iron Space. Several satellites of this type have already flown on Iron 5. JX5 was assembled and tested in Cannes in the south of France. The telecom payload was tailored by Thales Alenia Space on the specific need of Inmarsat. It will support mobile communications over Europe and the Middle East. Inmarsat and Iron Space contracted the launch of JX5 end of 2017. In the meantime, several meetings were held to prepare the mission and the satellite operations in Kourou. All interfaces between JX5 and Iron 5 were duly documented and approved by all parties. This includes the detailed sequence of events on the day of the launch. It starts with satellite wake up early in the morning followed by several hours of cross-checks by launch base and satellite teams involving remote stations all over the world. Iron Space CNES and Iron Group wish their customers a successful mission. And during that film we picked up the signal at the tracking station. The tracking station in Natal and that's in Brazil on the northeastern coast of South America. And the flight path takes us out across the Atlantic, across Africa and along the equator. The launch is sending signals back to Earth during its flight and uh, we have a network of stations along that flight path keeping us in constant watch, if you like, over the health of the systems. And this is now the switch off of the main stage and the upper stage has now switched its engine on. You can see that's what it Allumage looks like. USC. There we go, confirmation there that the upper stage has now switched its engine on and that's uh, cameras on board a previous flight showing us what it looks like when the main stage is jettisoned. So you're looking here now at the upper stage is the white disc, the black structure is what we call the silda. that's um, a, a protection mechanism for the satellite underneath it. Today it's GX5 and it also allows us to attach the satellite in front. It makes the dual launches possible and we're really entering now the next phase in this flight because the upper stage has taken the wheel and the is going to burn for about 16 minutes, and he's just told us that the uh, propulsion is nominal. It's normal. Tiba One is owned and operated by the Egyptian government.
Well, that gives you a real sense of just how important this satellite is going to be for everybody in Egypt. And actually, Tipo 1 is the fourth satellite which has Ascension. launched for Egypt. The previous ones were Nilesat. And we're just hearing there now that we're picking up the signal at the Ascension Island tracking station. La and that the propulsion is normal. Uh, Ascension Island is a, is a tiny volcanic island in the South Atlantic. It's halfway between South America and Africa. I believe that NASA had a station there until 1989. Tiba teams there. Airbus Defence and Space and Talas Selenia Space built Tiba 1 as co-prime contractors. They've created an advanced satellite. With a Tiba 1 satellite, Egypt takes its place amongst the big players in space. As its new satellite, is a jewel of advanced technology. It will give Egypt a dual-use civil and government telecommunication system that is extremely efficient and secure in K-band, based on latest digital payload and antennas technologies. This program had ambitious objectives, both in terms of performance and technical challenges. These were met thanks to the extended cooperation and trust between the Egyptian customer team and the French industrial team, Thalesania Space and Airbus. On behalf of this industrial consortium, I would like to thank the government of Egypt for the confidence in us and the quality of our great cooperation. We are committed to standing side by side and every step of the way. I also want to thank the French authorities for their continuous support all along this program. We all wish the very best for Tiba 1. Tiba 1 is the first dual telecommunication satellite for the government of Egypt. It is a particular honor for Airbus to build this satellite and its ground segment together with Thales Alenia Space. We know the vital importance of this program for the national security and the sovereignty of Egypt, as well as for your economic development. I would like to thank the government of Egypt for their trust in Airbus and our highly reliable Eurostar 3000 platform. We hope that it opens the door for future collaboration between our countries. I would also like to convey my thanks and recognition to the Airbus teams and, of course, to our partner, Thales Alenia Space, who provided the satellite payload. This also is an opportunity for me to warmly congratulate the government of Egypt for the high level of collaboration and professionalism of the Egyptian managers and teams who have shown incredible dedication and involvement in the preparation of the service operations. It's no time for me to wish Tiba One a successful launch and a long life in space. Great cooperation there between the two aerospace giants of Europe to make uh, super, some superb satellites today. And if you look at... He says everything's normal. L top right-hand side of your screen, you can see the uh, trajectory there. We call that the roller coaster effect. Uh, when uh, the, you see, can see that we were climbing high into space, then we've dropped a little bit of altitude, and then we start climbing higher again. That's because before we were using all our power to get away from Earth. Now we're going to be using it to be able to start speeding up so we can climb higher and higher later in the flight. So let's turn our attention now to our second passenger in Marsat's GX5. It's a hugely advanced satellite for mobile broadband, and it's going to deliver 
greater capacity than the whole of Inmarsat's existing GX fleet. A word from their CEO now, Rupert Pierce. As we enter the era of an always-on, hyper-connected world, we can clearly see that connectivity now empowers human potential as never before. And that connectivity can flatten the world by bringing us together. In our 40th anniversary year, we at Inmarsat can be very proud of the role we're playing in building and underpinning this emerging global digital society. Global Express represents the gold standard for global mobile broadband communications and is deployed by thousands of users in the air, at sea and on land. Already Inmarsat's maritime GX service, Fleet Express, has been installed on more than 7,000 vessels and 27 leading airlines have signed up for our Aviation GX service, GX Aviation, to provide broadband connectivity to their passengers, while more than 600 business jets have adopted our Business Aviation GX solution, Jet Connects. We're very proud that these GX services are empowering a transformation in these enormous trillion dollar sectors, including making the maritime and aviation industries more efficient and effective but also greener and safer. The first four GX satellites were launched to deliver seamless global coverage, plus in orbit redundancy. Today, the terrific initial success of our new GX services are driving us to a second phase of network evolution, as we now look to augment our capabilities to meet huge growth in demand from our customers, as well as keep GX well ahead of our current and future competition. Indeed, the launch of our fifth satellite in the GX fleet represents a step change advance in the capabilities of our GX services to meet the growing demand for aviation passenger connectivity and commercial maritime services across Europe and the Middle East, delivering a bandwidth increase that is greater than the combined capacity of our entire existing GX fleet, marking the start of an unprecedented enhancement in the overall capacity and capabilities of the GX network. Because we're not stopping here with GX5, Inmarsat is planning to launch a further seven GX payloads over the coming four years. So the future looks incredibly exciting for Inmarsat, our partners and our customers. Et je tiens également à remercier nos partenaires Thales Alanyaspas et Ariane Aspas pour leur service extraordinaire d'innovation le travail acharné et le esprit de coopération. Wherever you are in the world, thank you for coming with us on this journey. Today marks another significant step forward as we grow still further global mobile broadband connectivity for all, no matter where you are. It's a changing world indeed and uh, teamwork is the name of the game. Now, look, you can see there our tracking stations and our flight path across our planet. We lifted off from Gallio in uh, French Guiana. And uh, right, right hand side of the screen, yeah, there you can see we've picked up the signal at the Libreville tracking station, which is now uh, tracking us. And we're heading out across Africa. We crossed the Atlantic in 20 minutes. It's pretty impressive, and we're climbing higher in altitude now, and the trajectory is nominal. GX5 is the fifth satellite in the Global Express uh, fleet, and it was built by the men and women at Talisalenia Space. This launch today is very special for us, because we are involved in both satellites about Ariane 5. Everyone at Stales Alenia Space feels personally involved in today's mission with a great sense of pride. It is a great honor for Stales Alenia Space to have built the most powerful Global Express satellite to date that will meet the surging demand for high capacity broadband across Europe and the Middle East. GX5 will play an important role in the dynamic growth of the Global Express network for Inmarsat and will significantly increase its existing capacity for aviation 
and maritime services. It is fitted with powerful state-of-the-art Caribbean technology and benefits from the extensive experience from Thales Enya Space in very high throughput satellites. At Thales Enya Space, we have been working with Inmarsat for more than 10 years now. And this fruitful relationship started with Inmarsat EAN. We are committed to continue supporting Inmarsat in its continuing growth by delivering satellites with outstanding performance. Congratulations to all the teams who have worked so hard on this mission. We wish Inmarsat and its customers the very best for today's launch. Indeed, and uh, we are now 23 minutes, coming up to 24 minutes into that launch, and we're in the range now of the tracking station in Malindi, that's in Kenya, on the east coast of Africa. So the guys and girls there will be monitoring the separation of our satellites. We've crossed Africa and uh, we'll be heading out across the Indian Ocean. And he's telling us that the propulsion is nominal. It's all going well. Um, so how does Ariane know what to do and when? Well, the upper stage has a brain, the intelligent part. We call it the vehicle equipment bay. And it's, it's more than an onboard computer, really. It's a whole management system, and it analyzes information from the engines, the navigation, etc., and it makes decisions for the best outcome of the mission. Right now, it's getting ready to switch off the engine. La propulsion est nominale. It'll send the cutoff command when it senses that the launcher is correctly orientated. It's going to need to be on track, so going in the right direction. And on time, the computer knows that it needs to fly from naught seconds to its cutoff time. So it also has to be at the right altitude, of course. And travelling at the right speed. And uh, there you have it. This is the scheduled moment for us to switch the engine on. Off, rather. Extinction de l'étage supérieur chirotechnique. And we have the confirmation there that we have now switched the engine off. So we're entering the next phase. It's called a ballistic phase. It means that we're coasting without the engine, without power. So we are indeed on orbit and at the correct altitude and speed. It means we're now getting ready to start the next phase, which is to prepare to separate our satellites from the mothership Got a couple of minutes to go until we're scheduled to separate our first passenger. Now these tracking stations that we can see along the flight path are sending the information that they collect back here to what we call the CVI uh, on a hill just behind us here at the Mission Control Center or the Quick Look Telemetry Display Control Center. And they receive the information from the tracking stations, uh, they process it and analyse it, and they report the flight status of the launcher back to the teams here in Jupiter. So they make a quick selection to check how the flight's progressing in real time, and then they tell the range operations manager when they have confirmation of the main events, so that he or she can then announce them to the range. Now, of course, later they can analyse the information to see how the vehicle performed and make any adjustments for future flights. So Tiba 1 is our upper passenger, the one at the front, and it's due to separate in a, a matter of seconds now. We're going through a very precise set of manoeuvres. The upper stage is orientating the satellite so that it can release it onto a very precise orbit. This is the scheduled moment for that separation. And we have confirmation there from the range operations manager that Tiba 1 has indeed separated from the mother ship. So uh, uh, congratulations to all the Tiba 1 teams. Now we have some applause there in the Mission Control Centre. So Tiba 1 is on its way. Congratulations to everybody in Egypt, of course, and uh, to the co prime contractors, Teleselenia Space and Airbus Defence and Space. 
But of course, we still have uh, our other satellite attached, GX5. That's underneath the black structure. If you look at the right-hand side of the screen, you can see the black structure, the SILDA. Ah, here we go. There's a better shot of it there. It's underneath, so we can't actually see it right now. And we're going to need to release that SILDA before we can start the process of releasing GX5. It's going to be released in about six minutes or so being tracked still by the Melindy teams where you can see the sort of star that's where we are heading out now over the Indian Ocean and Tiba 1 is starting its new life it needs to climb to 36,000 kilometres to geostationary orbit before it can start delivering services Various different things will have to happen to it over the next few days. Lots of testing. And here we have now the separation of the SILDA. And confirmation there that it has indeed separated. It moves away. It was protecting GX5. All big space projects involve a tremendous amount of teamwork and challenges. Hello, I am the Tiba One Program Manager for Airbus. Hi, I am the Tiba One Program Manager for Thales Aina Space. Tiba One Program is the first communication space system for the government of Egypt. This space system consists of a car-bound, dual-use, civil and government telecommunication satellite and its associated ground segment with protected and secure ground satellite link. It is based on state-of-the-art antenna technology and digital payload providing resilience, flexibility and interconnectivity. Tiba One satellite is designed and built in partnership between Thales Alenia Space for the payload and Airbus for the platform, which is a flight-proven and highly reliable Eurostar 3000 platform. The communication module was integrated by Thales Alenia Space and handed over to Airbus, who then drove the satellite integration and test phase. Many thanks to both industrial teams for their efforts on the program. Tiba One was shipped mid-October to the Centre Spatial Guyane. Many thanks to the Ariane Space team with the CSG and Ariane Group teams for the hard work for this launch. After the separation from Ariane 5, the Airbus teams in Toulouse will carry out the satellite launch and early orbit phase, which will span over one week. It will be followed by the in-orbit test in December before the handover to our customer. I thank you very warmly the government of Egypt for its confidence and for the exchange always held in a good spirit throughout the program. This program had ambitious objectives both in terms of performance and technical challenges. These were met thanks to the extended cooperation and mutual respect between the government of Egypt team and the French industrial team Thales Aina Space and Airbus. I would like to thank all team members from Thales Aina Space, Thales 6, Thales Egypt and Airbus who contributed to this major project for the government of Egypt. I would like to thank the government of Egypt for the quality of our great cooperation. And now, and now we, we all wish good luck to Tiba One. one. And uh, uh, Christophe Dallest happens also to be the son of Arian Space's founder and its first president 40 years ago, Frédéric Dallest. So, uh, a nice tie in there. Um, so, he's saying everything's normal. Building an advanced satellite system is a feat of engineering and human endeavor. endeavor. The biggest challenges of this program were, first of all, the capacity to fit such a complex payload in a relatively small spacecraft, allowing us to fly in IN5 lower position. There is not a single location unused on the satellite body. The second one was the schedule challenge, with a delivery on the launch pad in 28 months, including a full speed AIT sequence of six months. This required a lot of effort and dedication from all to reach this objective. I want to deeply thank both Inmarsat and Thales Alina Space teams for this journey, as well as INSPAS for their fruitful cooperation all along this launch preparation. After GX5, separation from RN5, operation teams of Thales Alina Space, 
and Telespatio located in Cannes and Fushino premises will await telemetry's acquisition to perform satellite health check and start develop activities consisting to first setup of propulsion subsystem in flight configuration, secondly get power by moving satellite with solar array partially deployed towards the sun, and finally perform rehearsal of orbit tracing maneuver allowing to bring JX5 on geosynchronous orbit. This first operation will last by eight hours. The duration of complete layup activities to bring JX5 at targeted longitude will last around 10 days. Less than a minute now until the planned separation of our second passenger, GX5 for Inmarsat. Everybody concentrating hard. Obviously not just here at the base, but across the world. The tracking stations are at Mal in Malindi, where the teams there are tracking these separation manoeuvres. And of course at Inmarsat, where they're monitoring the satellite's health and progress and everyone's getting ready to take on their new baby, start the process of flying their new satellite. Separation in Marsat, GX5. And we have separation confirmed <laughs> of Inmarsat GX5. <laughs> Great news, Ariane 5 has delivered her second passenger. Congratulations to everybody at Inmarsat. Best wishes as you take charge of your spacecraft. Happy faces here and jubilant smiles. Two new satellites are born. A job very very well done. Lots of handshakes and big slaps on the back, no doubt. For some people, the work is done. Some people have worked for years to get ready for today. And for other people, of course, the work's just beginning. The teams in the control centers are now taking charge of their babies, monitoring these first maneuvers. Wishing them all the very best now for that. And of course, other teams will be able to relax this evening. We're setting the podium for the, the speeches that we like to have after the launches and after the events. These teams all know each other well, of course, and uh, they've been working very closely, shoulder by shoulder. And uh, we lifted off from the pad about 36 and a half minutes ago from launch pad number three here at the Guiana Space Center on board the 250th Ariane vehicle to lift off from the Guiana Space Center. It really was a spectacular launch. We were very lucky. off on board an Ariane 5, our two passengers, Tiba 1 and GX5. Lots of applause here in the Jupiter Control Center. Showing the flags and uh, shaking hands, getting ready uh, for the official speeches. There's the Tiba One teams here, looking very happy.
lots of photographs being taken, of course. Uh, everyone feeling very proud of themselves, I hope, for a job well done. <laughs> Waiting now for the post-launch speeches. And of course, up in space, the upper stage is going through its next processes. Once we separate the passenger, what's left of the upper stage is spun up into a different direction. We call it passivation. In the meantime, back down here on Earth, everyone's celebrating the uh, successful launch of the two satellites. So, ladies and gentlemen, I and Space is delighted to announce that uh, TIBA-1 and Inmarsat JX-5 have been separated as planned on the targeted geostationary transfer orbits. Success tests even better when a little of patience was needed. It was the case for tonight. So tonight is a very special launch for many reasons. We are now celebrating with this launch the 250th launch from the Ariane family. You know that the journey has started for Christmas 1979, 24 December, with Ariane first, and we are now almost 40 years later. What a journey we have done together. We are really proud that this launch, which is really special for all the Ariane family, has been delivered for loyal partners and customers. I would like, regarding TIBA-1, first to thank deeply uh, Egypt, our partner for, and customer for this launch. This satellite is the fourth satellite Ariane Space orbits for an Egyptian actor, after three for NISAT. But it is the first we orbit for government of Egypt. We have with us here in the Jupiter uh, room, very high level representative from Egypt, and we are very proud to welcome them and to have uh, them with us tonight. For TIBA-1, I want also to thank uh, our satellite partners for this launch, Airbus and Thales Alenia Space. Airbus is uh, our direct customer for this launch. We have a long lasting partnership with Airbus and Thales Alenia Space, and we are very happy to have the opportunity to celebrate it for this launch. I want also to thank our second customer and passenger for this launch, Inmarsat. We have within Marsat a long story. The first in Marsat have been uh, orbited uh, in 1981, and it is the 10th satellite we orbit tonight for in Marsat, so it is also a birthday for us. I'm sure that Rupert Pierce is uh, watching us. I want to thank him for his trust. And one more time, we have delivered successfully for in Marsat. Regarding JX5, the satellite uh, manufacturer is uh, Thales Alenia Space, and I have said how our partnership matters for us. So, 250 uh, launches of Ariane. This success, for sure, is uh, the success of Ariane Space Teams, and I want to thank them for their commitment, and they have shown these last days how they are committed to Ariane, but for sure, it is a success of a family. This family is made of many players. We have, for sure, to celebrate and to thank ESA and all the member states of the Ariane program whose support is essential. You know that tomorrow we will have the start of an ESA ministerial conference gathering all uh, the ministers of space and uh, how beautiful it is to enter in this conference with one more success from Ariane. So thanks, ESA. I want to thank CNES. CNES is Ariane 5 Design Authority. CNES is our daily partner in CSG. We welcome tonight uh, the new director of CSG, Marianne Claire, and uh, definitely what we have done since so many years, we have done it with CNES. I want to thank Ariane Group. Ariane Group is the prime contractor of Ariane 5. Ariane Group is the main shareholder of Ariane Space. We know that all the engineers of Ariane Group and all the suppliers were uh, mobilized for this success. So thanks to Ariane Group. 
I want for sure as well to thank our contractors here in French Guiana. They have shown also for this launch that they were able to work without counting their hours. So once again, celebrate this wonderful success. Thank you very much to all our customers. And now I would like to welcome on stage our customers and partners. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. A fantastic moment. And to be honest, for me, it was the first time here in Kourou. Uh, so spectacular and breathtaking moment. So first of all, thanks a lot to Ariane Espace and their partners, Knes and Isa, for again another success. Uh, it's amazing to, to see the reliability of this launcher. And as you say, uh, Stéphane, the cooperation and the, uh, the work between Airbus and Ariane Espace has been a, a long-lasting story. And I am more than happy today that, to see that this cooperation is serving the space ambition of Egypt. I would like also to warmly thank our customer, the government of Egypt. Thank him for the trust he has put in our consortium, Airbus and Thales Salina Space, to build their very first governmental satellite. It has been an honor to work with you. I would like also to congratulate your team that has been following this program side by side with our teams during three years hard work, professionalism, and expertise. So congratulations for that. I would like also to take the opportunity to thank the French government, represented by the DGA tonight in this room, for supporting this cooperation for space between our two governments. Dear customer, tonight you have in orbit a satellite which is a state of the art for broadband and secured communication. And I think you can be extremely proud for that with all the people of Egypt to be tonight part of the space nations of having such an asset. Tiba One is based on the Eurostar 3000 platform. I think tonight it was the number 51 of this platform that has been orbited. And I will say that tonight we can say that with Eurostar and Ariane 5, we have, we have probably the most reliable couple for making telecommunication in space. So the story is not over. After this launch, we will be still working together for the operational deployment of the satellite. And we'll be at your side again during all the lifetime of the satellite. And for sure, should our cooperation should last, we'll be more than happy to be at your side in the coming years. Last but not the least, uh, I would like to thank the teams of Airbus, wherever they are in Europe, in the UK, in France, or in Germany, I would like to thank them for their dedication, their hard work to make such a success. And for them, again, the story is not over. They have taken the control of the satellites from our control center in Toulouse. And, can be, and I'm very happy to tell you that we are receiving the telemetry and everything is okay. So it's on its way. Uh, those people are going to work during the coming weeks with a lot of uh, dedication. So as a conclusion, I would like to say that uh, with all the partners, all the people that are in this room that have worked on this program, more than ever, we can say that teamwork is the motto of our space industry. And now, if you allow me, I will try a few words in Arabic. Hayat Tawila Lil Kamar Tibawarid. Long life to Tibawan. Thank you and enjoy it. So good evening to everyone. So uh, it's also an event for me uh, because it's, it was my first launch, uh, more so after having joined Thales Alenia Space about uh, just six months ago. So many thanks to Ariane Espace uh, for this wonderful launch. It started with uh, some adventures to test, I think, the solidity of our nerves, uh, but it ended very well. Kullu uh, as we say in Arabic. Uh, we have now two important uh, satellites uh, in space and uh, Thales and Alenia Space, uh, we feel really proud because we were involved actually in uh, both of them. Uh, it's not often that uh, two of our uh, satellites uh, travel together on the same rocket, uh, but it happened today for the third time uh, aboard Ariane 5. Uh, it was a particularly exciting launch for Thales Alenia Space in that regard. So first, I would like to very warmly thank the delegation uh, of the government of Egypt for their confidence uh, and trust in us. Uh, 
uh, and our partner uh, Airbus uh, for the quality of our cooperation. Uh, at Teleselenia Space, we will put the same energy into developing further um, your current system as well as uh, developing new ones to help enhance uh, Egypt's uh, influence. I also want to thank the French authorities uh, and, uh, for their support in realizing this contract and in particular the French uh, DGA. Second, I would like to thank everybody at Inmarsat um, and in particular uh, Rapid Pierce for placing uh, your trust uh, in such an important program uh, for Inmarsat and Peter Hadinger and his teams uh, for the excellent team spirit that was the key to this success. Third, a big thank to all uh, of the teams and in particular the women and men uh, at Teles Alenia Space uh, who have demonstrated their commitment, enthusiasm and professionalism. We have the deep, deepest respect for each and every one of you. I hope you feel very proud of yourselves. Well done to all uh, uh, for this superb achievement. Right now, the next steps uh, are to get the uh, satellites to their final orbit and validate uh, the space segment. Uh, the team have already begun uh, to work on this. Uh, we have already the telemetry for uh, TIBA-1. I'm expecting the telemetry for Inmarsat. I think it should not long, last very long now. So these might be two very different satellites, uh, but they have something in common. Uh, most importantly, the excellent quality of the teams. Both spacecrafts are outstanding projects. Uh, and behind outstanding projects, we find remarkable uh, people. One of the greatest pleasure in our business uh, is the deep relationship we build with our customers over the years. Uh, in a happy coincidence, the World uh, Conference of Radio Communication took place in Egypt this month uh, and just ended, actually last Friday, just a few days uh, before Egypt got its new satellite. So an important moment for all our Egyptian uh, friends. So we wish all the best to Tiba One. Uh, allow me to say in Arabic, Alf Mabruk, uh, to our Egyptian friends. Uh, we wish also in Mahsat uh, and its customers the very best for GX5. Good luck to everyone involved in the next phase of operation over the coming hours and days. Congratulations to all. Merci. Shokran. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, on behalf of all of you in Marsat, I want to thank everyone who's been involved in making this launch a success. Um, I can confirm we do have telemetry from GX5, so we're good news there. Um, th this, uh, this spaceport is so important and it's been great to spend some time here and I want to thank in particular Kness and ESA for maintaining and operating this site. So when Imarsat selects a, a launch service provider, what we look for, number one, is reliability. And, Air and Ariane's Pass here are second to none in that criteria. So as Stefan says, launch 10 satellites with Imarsat, and that represents the trust that we have in Ariane's Pass. And I want to pay tribute to the teams in, that we've been working with. It's been a great privilege to work with the teams over the last uh, 10 days or so, and to see it in action the this, this skills, the professionalism, and I know we'll be back. So the GX5 spacecraft is a very important one for Imarsat. It's going to deliver a huge amount of uh, new capacity into our global network, particularly over the Middle East and over Europe for our aviation and maritime customers. And we entrusted Talis to be able to build this spacecraft, and I'm delighted to say they delivered on their promises. Likewise, working with the teams over the last, in Talis over the last couple of years has been a real privilege. When, when problems come along, as all programs do, they're addressed in a very collaborative, in a great spirit, and they're, they're addressed speedily and to resolution. And it's a great credit to the professionalism and the skills of the Talis team, so thank you ever so much. And likewise, I know we'll be working again in the future. So, the satellite launch is a momentous event, but a satellite launch by itself doesn't make, everything, doesn't make the whole network work. And I want to pay tribute in particular to the uh, 2,000 people in Mossat and their families who, who support them to actually can make this into a proper business. People who are doing the ground segment side, designing networks, designing terminals, operations, 
but also people who are in supporting all the functions. I'm thinking about IT, HR, finance. Without all those 2,000 people, we wouldn't have a successful business. So I want to say thank you to them, all their hard work and dedication, because this only happens because of, because of them. So as I say, we have telemetry from GX5 now. The focus now moves to the south of France, to the Thales Control Centre, where they'll spend the next 10 days positioning the satellite into the correct orbit and performing the deployments. And that will be followed by testing of both the spacecraft and the network, and then it'll enter into operations to be part of Inmarsat's Global Express Network. And we hope that we welcome it as, it's for, as the 14th member uh, of our satellite fleet. Uh, so thank you ever so much. And finally, I just want to wish the best of luck to our uh, Government of Egypt colleagues, uh, a very successful mission. And I hope, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, best of luck for the future. Thank you very much. The year is not uh, totally over in uh, CSG, so we will be back on December the 17th. It will be uh, with a Soyuz vehicle, and it will be uh, as well a very important mission. We will have uh, Cosmos Kymed, uh, a second generation for uh, ASI and uh, Thales Alenia Space, so for Italy. We will have a scientific mission for ESA with uh, KEOPS, and we will have uh, three uh, auxiliary payloads with ANGELS, ISAT, and OPSAT. So thank you very much for this wonderful evening, and see you back December 17th. Thank you. And here we are again on the terrace to thank you one last time. We hope that you enjoyed this uh, video transmission and uh, the thanks. So many thanks to Manuel de Oliveira, our director, uh, all of the other people in the team. Thanks uh, to Lise and Josh for helping us. Thanks uh, to veteran Guy and young Etienne. And uh, I'd like to say congratulations to everybody, to all the teams, to um, in particular to obviously to the Inmarsat teams and the Team of One teams, the government of Egypt. But I would also like to say huge congratulations to the gentleman standing next to me because Claude, he was here for the first Ariane launch in the Mission Control Centre and 250 launches later, 40 years later, here he is doing his last Ariane launch and I want to say how proud I am to Thank have spent you, many years working with you, Thank Claude, you. on these launches. Claude will be back uh, for that Soyuz launch in December, but for now we are going to say goodbye and we're going to leave you with uh, a replay of the launch from Claude and from me. Goodbye. Au revoir le drone, au revoir le drone, ciao ciao. <laughs>